Well, I don't really necessarily bug people about their personal life. But you posted several times in the last week about stuff going on with your oh, he, son. Yeah. Is he doing okay? He's good, yeah. We just, we figured it out. He just, he's got um, <clears throat> the Epstein bar is what it's called. So basically he just swells up when he gets sick. But we're still at cat scanning and all that Monday. So, But he's good. Thank you. Yeah, he's all good. He's got big plans. How do you, how do you balance privacy with a f support group from your fans? We're pretty out there. You know, we're not real private. It, I think if you let folks in, you know, it it kind of helps your fan base, I think. You know, we don't tell them what color underwear we're wearing. <laughs> not yet, anyway. Not, not yet. <laughs> but, yeah, we, we just kind of let everybody in on everything hear about your next planned project for this band what you've got in the works uh, just writing right now I'd, I kind of want to do a little slower mellower record but I've said that before and we come out and it didn't turn out we come out with something that falls of the wall but I don't know we'll see so far you know we got five songs I think that are either done or almost <clears throat> done talking to Jason, of course he was just in here as you saw him, he's already got half of the next studio album. Yeah, he's kind of an overachiever. Yeah, he suddenly <laughs> picked up the pace. So yeah. He's always written quite that fast. He's got a lot going on in that bean. <laughs> smart guy. Very smart. Tell me about the impending collaboration with Glores, I understand it. Yeah. I really just found out about that the other day and I don't know anything about it. So yeah, we, uh, we did an acoustic record in Port A, same place I did my acoustic record. I think y'all did one down there, didn't you? Same place? Yeah, when it was full light. Okay. But yeah, it's just songs that we wrote together and some new, older stuff and some new, Tom Skinner songs. and It's called uh, Chip and Ray Together Again for the First Time. <laughs> That's the part that had stuck in my memory. Together Again for the First Time. But chip, and Ray. Get chip and Ray, what's that? We don't know. We think somebody used to he's Michael Ray and the best we could remember is somebody didn't know my name back in Stillwater they thought I was Chip that's, oh, the, that's the best we can remember I, it's, kind of, it's kind of foggy <laughs> 20 years been foggy <laughs> well, I would talk about Skinner what songs are you going to play on there I did uh, Ain't Nobody Knows and McClure did uh Oh, what did he do? He did used to be, of course. And he did, um, oh, man, what's the other one called? Nickel's Worth a Difference. Yeah, he did that. So. Just discussing the geography of green country versus these fellas from Kansas. Yeah. And <laughs> I quoted that song to him. <laughs> That's a good tune. It is. Uh, me and Waldo got tattoos. Oh yeah. Bam. There we are. I don't have any tattoos and I'm just about to get one of those. It's just about inspired me. I see that, how it looks that. The memorial that was up there. Over there. Uh, what were some of your favorite performances other than when you guys were doing your own thing? Uh, man, there was so much going on. Um, Friends that you know or maybe somebody <clears throat> you hadn't seen before. Well, you know, I'd never in my life seen Randy Pease. You know, I've been doing Rosalie for years, but I never, I've never met him. I still haven't met him, but saw his show and was pretty impressed by that. Of course, Greg Jacobs can't go wrong. But it was all, all the whole day. Fulbright was great, as he always is. He's just moved to Tulsa. He's That's what I heard. Showing up at Science on those days. Awesome. Sweet. <clears throat> That's awesome. Don. Gene that was at Science, Gene Williams, and he's decided to take Wednesdays off because I think he's just so, so down losing Tom. Yeah. I know you were close to him, worked with him for a long time with Mike. Mm -hmm. uh, just curious to your perspective and tell us a little bit about Tom on a personal level. <laughs> We've been preparing for Tom to leave us for 15 years since his first heart attack. So we talk about it openly all the time. We had to pick him up out of parking lots when he had been resuscitated by his own defibrillator. You know? So it was, you couldn't be more prepared, but still, 
so it doesn't hit you like a normal death in the family. It's a low burn, slow, slow, and low, and still going. It doesn't be able to pop something in any given moment. I know Michael said it. Hard time getting this anybody to be dealing with. It. So that's a good decade we spent band with him. <clears throat> and I did a band with him before, several, several years before. So we've done him for I mean, almost all our adult musical lives. And he's, he's stuck out with all the piles of humans. You know, he was always telling his own level. That's a lot for me, too. Yeah. Um, for people from Stillwater and just in this general area of Oklahoma, Tom is a pivotal figure, at least a lot of people know and recognize his influence and impact on the scene. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's maybe growing up as a young kid in Texas, probably not going to have had the opportunity as much to see a Skinner, a Childers, a Randy Crouch. Yeah. What would you say to those guys, try to draw them out to look these fellas up? <laughs> I'd give them a CD. <laughs> yeah. Just say, dig in, you know. Music. Usually I end up playing, if I mention Tom's name or Bob's name, that nobody knows, then I usually play them a tune. Either I play it or spin the disc, you know. And usually they're hooked. Cause it's good stuff, you know. It, they taught us how to do it, how we grew up. <clears throat> Still water on Bob and Tom's lap, you know. Not literally. <laughs> but maybe, <laughs> maybe some nights, yeah. <laughs> a few nights at the farm are a little fuzzy. <laughs> Since you said that, it makes me think. Seeing Brandon Jenkins the other day, we were, you know, Tom had passed, and people would just be nostalgic and talk about different things, and I don't even know what exactly the transition to the farm in general was. But Jenkins says, you know, I. People sort of deify that, glorify that. Just a bunch of guys sitting around the campfire most of the time. He says, when I was in college, I wanted to go where the women were. So I'd <laughs> hang out on the strip. He says, yeah. Best looking woman out at the farm most nights was Scott Evans. <laughs> 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 That's funny as shit. <laughs> 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 do, do you think there is a somewhat of a deification or glorification of that? that I, yeah, I, I, I honestly felt it. When we yeah. were out there, I felt this is something. But we created that dedication. You know? Yeah. And it was real us. Just because we wanted to. Yeah, watching everybody share songs and you know, <clears throat> watching Tom play a Bob Childers song to Bob Childers. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, with absolutely no net beneath him, you know, just, here, I'm going to sing your song better than you. You ready? One, two, three. <laughs> but yeah, it was something. It I went out there the, when Tom passed. I made a little pilgrimage through Oklahoma and drove the kids around and went out to the farm, and it is completely shut down. I mean, it's there's two fences, one right at the, the road and one right at the gate. So there's, I guess they said uh, Tom or Tim Holland over at Joe's said that uh, the kids have been going out there and smoking pot. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, what we did. The church owns that land now. Oh. That's so oh. what I have heard. There you go. That's right. <laughs> uh, what was the favorite memory for each of you guys from Medicine Stone Past? My first. This is your first one, isn't it? Yeah. It's my first one. Your first one. That's true. It's me and Jeremy been here three years. Yeah, three years. I don't know. They've all been great in their own little way, you know. Tonight's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah. A couple of years ago, like the, like the first time we were here, uh, I went for a nice long walk along the river. It's fun. It's good to see this country out here. It's beautiful. <clears throat> this is where we came in the summertime from Yukon. You know, we'd come out here and <clears throat> float and drink and whatever we could do. All kinds of other stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> first time I came out to Tahlequah, I came with my buddy Trent Logan, and I didn't have a truck. My truck was in the shop. I was busted, and he, man, I'm not just dripping. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, we'll keep this one short. That's all right. But uh, they threw me over the fence at uh, the buzzard roost, Roxy's, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And I had a quarter, I swear to God, I'm not making this up. And they had a, a big pickle jar full of water, and there was a shot glass in the bottom, and if you made it into the shot glass, then you got a six-pack of beer. So I was like, boop. Once, like, holy shit! <laughs> I was completely broke, you know, and I was mooching off my buddies. 
So I got a six pack and I watched this guy, crazy, crazy looking Charles Manson guy on stage playing uh, the Flintstones with a fiddle and a wah pedal. I had no idea who this guy was. <laughs> Ended up sitting talking with him and he didn't know me for nothing, you know, and it's the nicest dude ever. And then I think I've told you this story. And then about six years later, everybody's talking about Randy Crouch is coming to Stillwater. And I had no idea who he was. And he walked in the front door of the Wormy Dog with no shoes and no no shirt. He just had a pair of cutoff Wranglers and a fiddle. I was like, that's the Flintstone guy. Oh, that's that's Randy Crouch. There's a lot of lots of memories out of here. Somebody had reopened Roxy's last. I think it's already closed again. Is it? Which, that seems to be the pattern there. Yeah. 